Hi everybody, welcome to the Mac Western 365 YouTube channel. And not an episode of Flow Bytes this time, we are moving with the rebrand. So welcome to the first episode of Auto Bytes, a number of self-help videos that are designed to help you with your Power Automate day-to-day -day issues or just give you some ideas about how you can use the application better. What we're going to be looking at today is how we can drive approvals by storing a number of people within a SharePoint list. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a list within SharePoint which contains users against a particular department. We're going to extract those uh, the relevant users from that list, push them into our approval action, and then follow that through from there. Sounds simple? Let's go and have a look. Okay, so what I've got first within SharePoint, I have a list which contains all of my approvers. Now my list is basically made up of the title field, which is where I've got the department name that that person belongs to. And I've also got an approver, which is a user lookup field, um, which will contain the name of the person who uh, needs to approve for that department. So as you can see, I've got two for sales. I've got one for engineering and one for management. I also have a document library, uh, which just has a single document in there at the moment. Uh, it has a department uh, field on there, and that's got sales. So what I'm going to be looking to do is when my... Um, a document is sent for approval, it will look for someone who's in the sales department, i.e. either Derek Trotter or Rodin Trotter, and ask them to approve that document. So let's actually put that into practice. Let's move across to Flow. And I've already started this very slightly because I just wanted to get a, a bit of a head start and really concentrate on how we get the information out and into approvals. Just to run you through what I've got so far, I have uh, a for a selected file trigger so that when my uh, someone wants to submit it, they can go to flows within the document library and run uh, this flow directly from there. I've got a file ID because there's a slight nuance that when the file ID comes through, for, uh, which is a numerical uh, figure, comes through from SharePoint, it actually comes through as a string. So I've used my, uh, my initialized file ID variable here to go and grab that so I can use that a little bit more easily later on. I have a department variable so that I can easily track what the department is and also uh, an initialize approval list uh, and that's what we'll be building up as we actually go through. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to go and actually get the file information. So the for a selected file trigger will only give me the very basic information. It will give me some information about the file, i.e. the ID. It will also give me some information about the, um, about the person who's actually requested the, uh, the flow to be run. So the, the usual uh, user context information. So the first thing that I need to go and do is, let's just go and grab my SharePoint actions. And what I'm going to do is go and get the file properties. So when I use the, the action get file properties, effectively what it's going to do, it's not going to be getting the file, the physical file, it's just going to get all of the associated metadata. And to be honest, that's what I'm interested in. So I'm just going to go and pop my site details in there. I'm going to select which library it was, so it's my policies library. And I'm going to set the ID. So this is where it wants the unique ID, and that's an, it's asking for an integer. Now, as you can see, there's no dynamic content appearing um, for this. And that's because, like I mentioned earlier, it comes through uh, in the trigger as a string. Now, I can um, reference the trigger body straight from here. What I like to do personally, though, is just make sure um, that I use uh, variables because it's easy for me to reference them. And you'll see that in a moment. So rather than using trigger body entity field as my path, all I'm going to do is reference this file ID variable. So I'm going to use an expression. I need to cast it as an integer because that's what SharePoint wants. It doesn't want a string. And I'm going to call it variables. And it's going to be file ID. So that's much easier for me to actually write in an expression than trying to put the full path. So let's OK that. So once I've got the file properties, 
I then need to take some of those properties and find what the, the other information is that I need. So I'm going to take the department that's been pushed, uh, that's been set against the document, and I'm going to use that information to look up into my approvers list to get the list of approvers that I want. So what I've got up here is I've got my initialized department variable, and all I'm going to do here is again for the same reason is because it's easier for me to reference, I'm going to use set variable, set my department. Now if I go and search for department in my dynamic content, I've got my department value. So whenever I see value, that means it's the textual value that's in the choice field in a metadata column. So I'm just going to go and quickly rename that so it makes a little bit more sense later. Okay, so I've set the department. I'm now going to look up the information in my uh, approvers list. Now that was a list rather than a library, so again I'm just going to go and grab my SharePoint actions and I'm going to use get items. Now the reason I'm using get items is because there may be multiple approvers that need to come back, so I need to potentially pull back one or more items. So again, let's just go and pop my site address in there, select my approvers list. Now this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the advanced options and in the filter query I'm going to provide some basic information here in order to pull back only the information from the approvers list that I actually want. Now if we think back, let's just jump back across, so my title field is what contains my department. So that's what I'm actually going to filter on. So in my filter query I'm going to put title, I'm going to use EQ for equals, and if you struggle with filter queries, please do check out one of the, uh, the other videos in my, uh, in my YouTube channel, because there's, uh, I do actually dive into some, some of these details. Um, and then I'm going to say where the title is equal to the department. Notice that it's between single quotes because I'm comparing a string. So that's going to return some items. What I then need to do is think about how I start to build my list of approvers. And what I'm going to do is use an action called append to string. Because I have up here an approvers list variable, which I mentioned earlier. I'm now going to iterate through all of the items that come back from my SharePoint list and append that into that variable. If I was to use set variable, it would just keep overwriting it every single time, so I would only end up with one person in there. That may not be the, the scenario that I want. I want multiple people. So I'm going to use the action append, and append to string variable. I can then say append to my approvers list. And I can then say, okay, so what is the actual item... Uh, item of data that I want to be appended. And the approval uh, action actually wants email addresses. So if I go and search for email in my dynamic content, I can see that I've got a number of uh, pieces of dynamic content that refer to email. And what I'm interested in is what comes back from get items. So that's the action which is going away and is getting my list of approvers. And it's my approver email, because if we think about the, the column here, so there's approver. Each one of these uh, user objects has a number of things associated, uh, properties associated with them, one of them being email. So I'm going to go and hit approver email. And as I'd expect it to, because it could be several items, it's put into an apply to each loop. That's absolutely fine. All I need to do is make sure that this gets re uh, reset because there's a slight bug at the moment where this gets wiped out. So if I just go and put that back into it. So my approver email. And then I need to make sure that I also include a semicolon so that it separates the email addresses. Otherwise, it will just come out as one long string. So now I've got my list building. Let's go and start an approval.
So for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to use start and wait for an approval just so that everything's done in one action. And I'm going to put first to respond. I'm going to give it a title. And I'm going to give it an assign to of my approvers list. So yeah, that's going to be my build, my list that's building up, my string that's building up. And let's just make this a little bit more nice by putting in a link to the item with link to document as the description. And let's save that. Okay, so now my flow is ready to, to rock and roll. So I'm going to go and run that from SharePoint. Now the reason why I used that trigger early on is because it's conceivable that a user may want to select the document they want, i.e. this is my sales policy, it belongs to the sales department. I'm going to come to my flow and here's my, uh, my custom flow which I've just written called policy approval. So if I go and run that, let's hit continue. Okay, so that's now started the flow. If I come back to my flow, let's go and have a look what's going on. So I can see here it's running. Let's have a look at what's gone on. So there's my file ID. My department is blank at this point, so is my approvers list. I'm going to get the properties of the file. So all the information that I could want about that particular file. I'm setting the department, so I'm setting it to sales. I'm then going to go and get the items from the approvers list where the title is equal to sales. And that's looking good. I've got some information coming back. I've then gone through and applied to each, and I've appended to the string. So on run one, and on run two, it appended Rodney Trotter. So now, I should, if I log in as one of those two users, I will see the approval waiting for them. Right, I'm just going to grab the other window. So this is logged in as Rodney Trotter. I can see here I've got my approved document already in waiting. Let's click on it. And from here I can either go straight to the document or I can choose my response. I can approve, I can reject, let's approve it. Response is recorded, and then my flow completes. So there we go. That's how we can build a very simple approvers manifest within SharePoint using a SharePoint list, pull it into Power Automate in order to, to give us dynamic approvers lists uh, for our, our approval actions. Really simple, really effective, and it would be really good for your users to be able to see that in action. I hope you found that useful. If you have any issues, please do feel free to reach out on LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, Facebook, or through the Power Automate community, and I'll be happy to give you a hand. For now, thank you for watching, and I look forward to speaking to you again soon.